Number 23 says that the linear inequality y is less than 2x plus 1 is graphed. Determine if each point is a solution. So they give us a list of five points, and we need to determine if each one of these points is a solution. So I'm going to plot each one of these points. 2, 1, I go over 2, up 1. That point is in the shaded area, so that is a point that would satisfy this inequality. 3, negative 2, I go over 3, down 2. Again, we are in the shaded area, so again, that is a solution to this inequality. Negative 2, 3 is up here. It is not in the shaded area, so this is not a solution. Negative 4, 0, so over negative 4, up 0. Once again, not in the shaded area, so it is not a solution. And 1, 3 is on the dotted line, points on dotted line are not solutions. So if this were to be a solid line, it would be a solution, but because we have a dotted line, all of the points on this dotted line are not solutions. 24 says that the table shows the input and output of a function. Explain what makes this data a function. So to to determine if this table is a function, every input has one output. So only one. So zero goes to one. There's no more zeros. One goes to four. No more ones. Two goes to seven. No more ones. Three goes to, or four goes to 13. No more fours. Five goes to 16. No more five. So since there's five different outputs with five, di five different inputs, all with a different output, that makes it a function. So each input has a different output. We need to write an equation to model this. So again, I need my slope and my y-intercept. My slope is going to be my change in y over my change in x. Every change is going down by 3. So 16 to 13 is minus 3. 13 to 17 is minus 6. 4 to 7 is minus 3. 4 to 1 is minus 3. 5 to 4 is minus 1. 4 to 2 is minus 2. 2 to 1 is minus 1. 1 to 0 is minus 1. So I'm going to take my change in y, which is negative 3, over my change in x, which is negative 1, and that gives me 3. I have a different change in y here. I have minus 6 here and minus 2 here. So negative 6 over negative 2 is also 3. So this has a constant rate of change. No matter what two points you're looking at, your rate of change is 3. Your y-intercept is when x equals 0 x equals 0 at the point 0, 1. So my y-intercept is 1. I could write this equation equals y equals 3x plus 1 because like we said my m was 3, my b was positive 1. Number 25 says at a bake sale, Alexis made $1,800 in 12 hours. So we can go ahead and graph this. We need to determine what my x variable would be and my y variable. My x is going to be my time in hours. My y variable is going to be the money earned in dollars. So it says that we need to go up to 12 hours. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I can go by ones. Two, Three, four, five, twelve. And money earned, I need to go up to at least eighteen hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to go up by two hundreds.
So now I have everything going up by two hundredths and time going up by one hour. So it said that Alexis made $1,800 in 12 hours. So in 12 hours, she made $1,800. So I'm going to plot that point right here. And at zero hours, we can assume Alexis made zero dollars. So I'm just going to connect this. And our graph looks something like that. What is an appropriate domain? Remember that domain is our x values. So I'm looking at my x-axis, which is in time. Time can never be negative. It makes no sense to have a domain including negative numbers. So my domain would be 0 to infinity. Technically, Alexis can keep going on forever. She can go on for, she can keep selling at her bake sale for 13 hours, 14 hours, 15 hours so forth. So this could go up to infinity, which would be a lot of days of her selling, but it is possible. It is not possible for her to sell at her bake sale for negative amount of time. So our domain has to start at zero and it can go up forever. What should the origin of the graph be represent for this situation? So the origin would represent at zero hours, Alexis has made zero dollars. So it makes sense. She hasn't started selling anything, so how could she make any money? So here, she hasn't sold anything, so she makes zero dollars. Once she starts selling is when her profit increases. What rate of change should be shown in Alexis's graph? So we have two points. We just said that we have the origin and we have this point 12, 1800. So we have our point zero, zero and our point 12, 1800. I can calculate the rate of change using the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 formula. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 is 1800 minus my y1, which is 0, over my x2, which is 12, minus my x1, 0. 1800 minus 0 is 1800. 12 minus 0 is 12. 1800 divided by 12 is 150. What this means in context of the problem is Alexis earns $150 every hour. So every hour she's been at the bake sale, it increases by about a 150. We calculated that using our change in y, which is money, over our change in x time. So money per hour. Number 26 asks us to rearrange the equation into slope intercept form. I think this is a very important skill because if you want to use your handy dandy graphing calculator, you have to have everything in slope intercept form. So I am going to draw a line down my equal sign. My goal is to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. That cancels out on the left. I have 2y equals 8 and 3x are not like terms. Like terms have to have the same variable raised to the same power. 8 does not have a variable. So these are not like terms. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 3x plus 8. Remember that you can write these in any order as long as you keep the sign associated with the term. So I keep this as a negative 3x and this as a positive 8. I still don't have y by itself. I need to divide everything by 2. When I do that, I get y equals negative 3 divided by 2 can stay as a fraction. So negative 3 halves x plus 4. 8 divided by 2 is 4.